A few reflections on the sixth Sunday of ordinary time, February 11th, 2024. The title that I given to these reflections is No Offense, We Need Healing. Healing is a process. Healing needs a good environment. If the world outside of the person is corrupt, unclean and unhygienic, instead of healing, deterioration takes place. Very often we sing that beautiful hymn, the world stands in need of liberation. When there is no freedom, both inside and outside, healing delays or illness deteriorates. Only when there is fulfilling and gratifying environment, the healing takes place. The liturgical readings on the sixth Sunday in ordinary time speak about leprosy and healing. If Moses appears to be anti-leper, on the other hand, Jesus is a friend and a healer of lepers. Perhaps it is opportune for us to know who exactly we are. Are we the healers or victimize those who are still suffering? What you have, many can have, but what you are, no one can be. I have three points to share with you. The first one is, illness needs acceptance and humility. Mark chapter 1 verses 40 to 45 recounts the healing of a man with leprosy by Jesus, offering profound insights into compassion, faith and the transformative power of the divine intervention. The narrative begins with a leper approaching Jesus, kneeling and imploring him to heal his condition. This act of humility and desperation reveals the social and physical isolation lepers faced during those times of Jesus. The leper's plea reflects a deep yearning for both physical healing and societal reintegration. In the healing of the leper, the power of inclusion and acceptance is celebrated. In the context of social justice, we are challenged to actively work towards creating a more inclusive and equitable society. In response, Jesus, moved by compassion, touches the leper and declares his willingness to heal. The compassionate touch not only breaks societal norms, customs and tradition, but also conveys a powerful message of love and acceptance. Jesus' actions challenge the prevailing stigma associated with leprosy, emphasizing the humanity and dignity of the afflicted. This person may stand for anyone who is excluded from the community and persecuted for being different. Prejudice and discrimination can be as painful as any physical illness. The second point is transforming and altering the healing power of Jesus. The subsequent healing serves as a testament to the transformative power of faith. The leper's belief in Jesus' ability to heal is met with the miraculous restoration of his health. This episode highlights the significance of faith as a catalyst for healing and personal change. It underscores the idea that beyond the physical ailment, spiritual and emotional restoration are integral aspects of true healing. The joy that is expressed by the healed man is contagious. It spreads throughout the community, prompting others to seek Jesus for their healing and restoration. We must encourage to recognize the humanity in every individual and to work and pray for a world where everyone is treated with dignity, respect and love. Moreover, Jesus instructs the healed man to keep the healing a secret and present himself to the priest for ceremonial cleansing. This adherence to religious protocol emphasizes the importance of respecting established norms and societal structures. It also suggests that Jesus is not undermining the religious order but rather fulfilling it in a way that brings about reconciliation and restoration. However, in the book of Leviticus, 
We see leprosy as a curse. Therefore, the leper must be excluded from the community. Sometimes religion can be senseless. It challenges us to approach those marginalized by society with empathy, to recognize the importance of faith in healing and to engage with societal structures in ways that bring about reconciliation and restoration. The third point, the last one, continual process of growth and conformity to the image of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 31 to chapter 11 verse 1 captures the fundamental teachings of the Apostle Paul regarding the Christian life, emphasizing the centrality of God's glory and the importance of imitating Christ. The passage begins with a well-known verse. So, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. This statement serves as a guiding principle for every aspect of a Christian's life. It encourages believers to recognize God's sovereignty over all areas, urging them to align their actions, thoughts and choices with the purpose of bringing glory to God. It elevates everyday activities such as eating and drinking to moments of worship when approached with the intention of honoring God. In our Christian journey, role models are part of our faith life. Paul positions himself as an example, emphasizing that the ultimate model for a believer is Christ. This challenges Christians to live in a way that mirrors the character, values and sacrificial love of Jesus. The call to imitate Christ carries profound implications for relationships, conduct and attitudes. It encourages believers to embody the selfless love and servant-heartedness that Christ exemplified during his earthly ministry. This imitation extends beyond religious rituals into the daily interactions and behaviors of believers. Moreover, the idea of imitating Christ implies a transformative journey. It suggests a continual process of growth and conformity to the image of Christ. This call to imitate Christ is a call to ongoing change, reminding believers that their lives should increasingly resemble the example set by the Savior. I have a few questions for self-reflection. The first one is, in what ways am I currently imitating Christ in my daily life? And where can I grow in reflecting his character more fully? Second, how do I weave and approach those who may be marginalized or stigmatized in society as exemplified by Jesus' compassion toward the leper? Third, do I understand the transformative power of faith in my life and how can I deepen my trust in God for healing and restoration? The last one, final one. How does my life reflect the concept of holiness and the seriousness with which I approach my relationship with God? Finally, let's conclude these reflections with a short prayer based on Psalm 32. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart filled with gratitude, acknowledging the blessedness of those whose sins are forgiven and whose wrongs are covered by your grace. In the light of your mercy, I find refuge and in the shelter of your love, I discover peace. Grant me the courage to always bring my shortcomings before you, trusting in your boundless compassion and forgiveness. May the weight of guilt be lifted and the joy of redemption be my constant companion. Your unfailing love surrounds me and I find joy in the abundance of your grace. Help me to share this joy with others, to be a source of encouragement and hope in a world that often feels burdened by sin and shame. Let my life be a testimony to your mercy and a reflection of the joy that comes from walking in your ways. We make this prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen.